Hello and welcome. I am Ms. Friday. Thanks for joining us. We continue Thrones and Bones Nordengard today, based on the fantasy trilogy, Thrones and Bones, uh, and written by the same person, Hugo Award winner Lou Anders. So this is fifth edition, Dungeons and Dragons. Our maps are utilized in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, masterfully crafted by Heroic Maps. And we have some additional tokens by Forgotten Adventures. So check out our YouTube in the uh, links below or join our Discord community. Um, and now we will shift to our recap, told by the intrepid Dave. Hello. Last time on Norengard, Throne and Bones. While feasting in celebration of Midsummer and Stokey's Hall, our intrepid party, party, newly tasked with investigating fell goings on in the city of Bents by Gorm the Gothi, were alerted to the machinations of a murderous feline of a buttery persuasion by Herman Talltales, purveyor of dubious truths. Tracking the furry foe into the barrel land beyond Bents, they discovered a defiled grave and descended to seek their quarry. Engaging with perilous ice spirits and rodents of unusual size and quantity, they discovered the mortal remains of Svartbavar's spy and a nefarious plot to divest the main sword of Bence's Jarl. Taking stock of their split priorities, the party decided to continue their, to explore the trap-riddled burrow, locate the murderous Moggy, and protect the folk of Bence from an early grave. Join us now as the adventure continues. Okay. And I need all of you to roll initiative. Uh, nice. Sten, you've just had the crossbow bolt slam into your shield. And remind me <laughs> if anyone has a torch uh, currently lit. I do. I'm, yeah. Who does? Looks like... uh, uh, Sten has a torch. Okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, so it uh, looks like you didn't fish all those nat 20s out of me because I just rolled one for initiative. Let's go! Did you? Because I didn't see it roll. Okay, yeah. so what would you roll? Total? Uh, just a nat 20. Uh, 20. No modifier? Okay. No modifier. And then uh, Seagill, do you got 22? Yep, 22. All right. Uh, Tulami, what'd you get? 16. Ectolina? 20. Dang. What's, all, what's up with these uh, really high initiative rolls? What's going on? Uh, Don't worry, I'll balance it out. I got a six. I've been knocked off, you know, Sten's been knocked off balance by the, the impact <laughs> of the, the coral in his, his shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Makes sense. Okay. All right, so. Sea Guild. Me. What are you doing? It's your turn. So, do I see anything? What is the scene? All like there was an arrow. There's a crossbow bolt that slammed into the shield as you all are traveling down uh, this tunnel. So you can't quite see. Um, you'd have to push past uh, Sten, so it'd be difficult terrain for you to, to get past him. So just an extra five feet if you'd like to go further down the tunnel. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I will go ahead and do that. Just a little, pardon me, push past. Um, and then move till I'm able to see whoever shot whatever shot so 30 feet away you see uh someone who has now an empty uh crossbow sitting next to the end of the tunnel uh set up beside some uh it looks like collapsed um rocks and they have aimed their weapon uh down the tunnel down at you um, they are dark haired pale skinned and dressed in what appears to be salamander hide leather armor. Okay. Uh, Sieghild is, let's see, that was 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, Sieghild's just going to raise her shield and hold an attack for if anybody gets close enough to attack. Um, 
and she's just going to shout back, someone over here. And that's her turn. Okay. Bjorn, currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, pushing, pushing to the front. Okay. Uh, So it's going to be difficult terrain because of how small the tunnel is, so you can get to right there. Okay. Uh, and I still haven't seen, uh, so I can't see around the corner. No. Uh, can I Can I dash? Yes. I will dash then. Okay. Uh, you have another 30 feet. So 10 feet to get past 10. All right. So... It's a big boy. So, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I assume it's I can't. I, I wouldn't be able to move past uh, Seek Hilt. It's the same uh, difficult terrain right there. 10, 15, 25. You could. I could. Yes. Then I'm, I'm going to move up uh, past Seek Hilt and ready myself uh, for Okay. whatever. All right, you can get another five feet down there. Okay. You can now see the Dark Elf sitting there. Ectolina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Um, Honestly, probably going to stay near the back anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to keep my eye out back here. In okay. case anything starts happening. Okay. All right. Uh, you see the Dark Elf load their crossbow and shoot at you, Bjorn, for a... ...22 to hit. Oh yeah, that'll hit. Okay. For... ...five piercing damage. And she says to you after firing at you, Bjorn, get away. Chalami, currently your turn. What are you doing? Do I know that it's a dark elf in the... I, I know I can't see it now, but did I have a, an idea from anything prior? No. I'm trying to remember last session. Okay. Um, I guess I will move forward. Would this be considered difficult terrain for me? To move past, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's just 10. a tight. It's a tight hallway. Is it ten per person that I yep. push past? Okay. Got ten, fifteen, twenty. I can only go there. <laughs> uh, ten twenty. Oh wait. Yeah, 10. Okay, I see what you did there. Um, yep. Okay. So, I guess I'll have my crossbow ready in case someone comes around the corner. Okay. And that's my turn. Then. Oh, can, what's can I try to hide? Is that possible in this area? Mm. Bonus action hide? Not in that tunnel. I mean, you look okay. down the tunnel, you're going to see everything down the tunnel. Okay. Stan, currently your turn. What are you doing? Okay, so Stan sort of snaps off the, the coral on his uh, shield and warily sort of advances to try and get to a point where he can see things. I guess the Ring of Darkness there. So I can't say it. It's like, it goes up behind uh, St. Gild. It's like, what is it? Sort of. Who's there? Would you like to do anything else? Uh, then, without an answer, he'll just maybe push through to try and get a, a view. So, so, maybe it's there. Yep. He still can't say anything. So he's going to say to Bjorn, like, who's shooting at us? Uh, it's uh, Svaltafar, I believe. I don't see but one. All right, it's Toki's turn. And uh, since uh, Will isn't here, I will be controlling Toki, and as he's trying to sh shove past uh, Tulami, he's going to say, Get out of the way, Dark Elf! Uh, and then <laughs> move a little bit. Alright. 
He's trying to shamble forward. Sea Guild, currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, sea Guild is going to uh, uh, step over here next to Bjorn. Excuse me, young lady. Do not see his army. Um, and she still has her shield raised, and she is just going to call over to this girl. Um, who are you? What What are you doing down here? You're very much outnumbered. Put your weapon down. Make a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. 19. Okay. Buren, your turn. What are you doing? I'm just going to double down on that, but more intimidatingly. Uh, look, you, you do well to listen to the lady here. Uh, you're not going to win this fight if you fight it, trust me. You're going you to flex on her? Uh, go yeah. ahead and roll an intimidation check. Oh, flexing hard with the 12. Okay. <laughs> All right. Exelina is still in the back. Do you have anything you want to do? Um, well, I guess I can kind of creep up a little bit now that things have started happening. Mm -hmm. Right up there behind, um, behind Tulami, and then she'll just duck down behind his shoulder and say, Is everything all right? What is going on? All right. And... That's it. After a moment of staring at the both of you, uh, the dark elf woman is going to lower her crossbow, sort of a untrusting squint for the moment, and we are exiting combat. So, who are you? I don't think that's any of your business. Well, when you're trespassing here in the halls of our dead, I do think it is some of our business. And shooting at us and all. Maybe that's we who? started off on the wrong foot. Hi, I'm Sieghild, and you are? Lunara. And you are? Lunara. Wonderful. Hunar? Lil Nura. Lil Nura. And might I ask what you're doing down here? I don't think that's as relevant as the terrible death that awaits you. So if you kindly, perhaps we can send it back up to the surface together, you think? Well, we're down here looking for something, so I don't think we'll be leaving anytime soon. Well, it just so happens that I'm not. And she stands up and brushes herself down, and you can see dust falling off of her, and uh, you can see that she's a little wounded. Looks uh, pretty haggard. What happened to you? Draugr. Draugr? This is not good. Oh. This is just lovely, isn't it? Mm. It's, uh, it's what happened to you, what happened to that other dark elf fella. Roger. So, we were here for something, and none of you are concerned, really, but Roger attacked us. That's all there is to it. I don't think there's and you need to really go in to depth about it. What's Tulami doing right now? Well, I was going to ask because I overheard um, Bjorn answering then uh, about who it was. Did I overhear him say it was? Yeah. Well, okay, so. then I... 
would be making my way. <laughs> uh, I would I would go to the mouth of the cave, like the, the tunnel, go back. And basically be waiting. I wouldn't go too much farther than that. Just oh. like waiting um, here to move myself. Okay. So she's moving away. Uh, I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, yes, I am. Okay. All right. So can I have Sven's gonna edge into the room slightly so we can actually see oh, what's oh, going on? Sorry, sorry. Pardon. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he's going to use his shoes. Yeah. He's going to hold the torch to get a better look. And as he's listening, I'm going to just see if I can, if, you know, the, the words are matching the expression of the face, um, whether, you know, trying to see what their intent maybe is. Like, I can, obviously, we get in the impression that they're very standoffish. They want us to leave. They're not very happy about being cornered here, apparently. Is it a dead end behind them, did you say? Yes, a collapsed tunnel. So they're, uh, so they're trapped here. So... Is there, do I get any sort of, anything from the body language or their expression that suggests that there's, they want us to, that there's, that they might be lying, for example. Not that I would uh, doubt it. Make an insight check. Fourteen. Okay. So, uh... As you look over this individual, you can see that they're dressed in uh, this Faltafar underhand officer armor. And that in of itself sort of casts a lot of doubt about the intentions of the individual. Um, and they're being fairly cryptic with uh, their reasoning, so it's kind of difficult to tell whether or not they're lying, but I mean, Asphaltofar out here near Bensa. Pretty suspicious, just generally. We can't just leave them here. They could come up behind us when we're in another chamber. And out of character, real quick, uh, the journal we found last session, because I don't take notes. I don't know if you know this about me as a oh, person. Oh, I, I know that. I don't that. take notes. I'm, I'm well aware that you don't take notes, yep. You've, you've, this is the third campaign with me. You know this, mm -hmm. you guys don't know this. I don't take notes. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> the journal that we found um, said that the Svaltafar were planning to, um, they, they were keeping track of the guard and were after the, um, the sword of the Jarl, correct? Yeah, they were watching the patrol routes, they were reporting on uh, information about Bensa, and also they were looking for the Sword of the Jarl. Okay. Well, considering what we found, I don't think we should uh, let this one go so easily at no. all. But, now that raises a question, what do we do now? I mean, we're still looking for that beast did you see a cat by the way a nasty little cat probably belongs to the draugr you came down to the burrows for a, a cat that's been killing people cat that kills people oh your problems in bents are brought with the uh, danger and terror I'll take that as a no not very helpful no Well, well, what are we to do? Do we take this one back? Or do we keep him with us? Hmm. This one is actually really serious. I think I think we should tell the arrow. I think we should take this one back. I agree. I agree. And do you stand? Well, it's either they die here or they die in the yarl, I suppose. Doesn't make me feel much about it handing directly over to him, but we can't. What else can we do? All right, well, it sounds like we've decided. Uh, sorry, but you're going to have to come with us. Oh, which would you like as your escort? Would you like a big guy here or a big girl here? Yes, we are both very strong. 
we'll let you have a choice. She looks in between uh, Bjorn and Seagull with sort of a wince. Well, I don't think I've seen anyone as big as Bjorn before. Thank you. That's All fine. Yours. Uh, I will point out, just generally, she still has a sword at her hip. Okay. How so, did she know your name? I don't know. I'm probably very famous now. I did win a bar fight after all. Uh, that gets people talking. I forget, you do this every time. Big bar fight, lots of fame. All right, then. <laughs> uh, look, uh, just keep that sword at your side, all right? I don't want any trouble. I, th I think I think I can take that if you, if you don't mind. Oh, that I... wasn't actually a request. I'll take that for you. That's fair. I do mind because of what's in here. Perhaps on the surface, I don't. But yeah, it's not a good idea. You know that's kind of fair. It would I'll be give you that. Ra rather rude of us to take. The only weapon they have. But we'll take the crossbow, though. You shot me with that one. That's the least you could do. Well, you... You seem to take it like a champ, so... I don't... Yeah. No hard feelings. A little bit of hard feelings, but I can get over it with time. Suppose that's alright. And, uh, we're... Walking to the surface now, and... Gives you a nod. Yeah. All right then. So she uh, points out the some of the rope traps uh, as you make your way back through the barrows. Seahold will be on uh, Toki duty on their way back. I don't understand why we're not killing this dark elf. Oh no, Toki. That's his contribution. <laughs> That's a lot of that back torch. and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so as, uh, where's, where's Tulami in this? As, uh, we make our way back through the tunnel over to where the, uh, rat attack was. Um, okay. So basically, if, oh, I'm gonna wait for them. I'm basically waiting to see if they bring her up or what's going on. I just don't want her to know about me. Okay. So I want if there if I can hide during this time I would have found a place. Okay, roll a stealth check. Nice, twenty three. Okay, yeah. So you find a uh, a place in the corner of the arrow area in the in the bar barrows uh, where you can sort of peek around the corner and not be seen easily but as uh Lil Nora will point out the various uh tripwire traps on your way back and she just kind of casually mentions it's uh connected to that one I didn't want any of the jogger following me back I didn't have much choice there but well, thanks for pointing it out uh, would Bjorn know, would Bjorn notice that Tulami isn't around? Or... Yeah. No? Well, Where's uh, the kid? That's strange. I don't know. Oh, Tulami! Oh, I hope the rats didn't get him. Oh, don't joke about that. Oh, I wasn't oh. joking. He, it's okay, he is somewhere behind me. He went back there earlier. But it doesn't make me feel better. No, he he, he will be fine. All He's right, Lena. Fourteen whole years old. That is pretty old. I would like all to right. remind you all that we are the adults in this situation. I mean, yes. I was, I was, I was pretty adult-like when I was fourteen. I was standing at about six feet. Adult-like, but not an adult. Fair. Tsunami. No, T Tulami will be fine. Tulami, are you okay? Wherever you are, will you please say something so that we can continue, so that we can keep going to to the village? Is um, 
I just need to know that they are in control of the situation. Yeah, so uh, Lil Nura is mm -hmm. surrounded with uh, the other party members, most notably next to uh, Seaguild and um, Bjorn. And she still has uh, her sword at her hip, but otherwise seems compliant. I will use my... I will use my, like, cape on my, like, the hood of my cape to, like, try to, and my hair that's pretty long, to try to, like, conceal my face, but my outfit is still pretty, so it doesn't really matter, but <laughs> just be like, you know what? But yeah, I'll still do that, though, just because I don't want her to know who I am. Okay. Um Okay. So you you've joined back up with us? Yeah, but I wanna like sneak in and then just like be standing beside somebody so then when they turn around it's like I was there the whole time. Yeah. Oh, there are you. <laughs> oh. oh there you are. Okay. Was a bit worried there, friend. You don't have to be worried about me. You are very capable. That's true. I'm still you alive, with your aren't hair. I? That is also true. How can you see yeah. where you're going with your hair like that? I can see in the dark. I, th I think it's a teenager thing, but it's a very popular oh. hairstyle to have like hair in a their eyes at that of age. Angst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I I see that. So as you all have this conversation, and uh, little Nora will turn around and look as soon as Tulami speaks, and squint slightly. Let's say nothing at this point. All right, then. Let's get moving. All right, and we're proceeding to back back the way we had come, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to be in the back. I'm not going to let her behind me. Okay. Fine. Suspicious. Yeah. And uh, we all... Uh, make our way back to the surface and you're now in the barrows and it's still cold out there's some fog around you can hear the distant howling of some wolves and Lulnora looks around for a moment before he starts to run then I'll do we make a grab at reactions her. yeah okay can I Roll. try to shoot her with my crossbow Yes, you can. Okay, so <laughs> Bjorn and Seagull, uh yeah. athletics checks. Ah, thank you. Uh, 23. Okay. 15. And Tulami, you can roll at advantage <laughs> as both of them grab Lil Nora. Can I try and grab uh, Tulami when I see them starting to shoot? Um, oh man, so much going on. They're unarmed. So Sten, like, spotting that they're running and they're oh, going to shoot Oh, a natural 20! <laughs> you just straight oh. up sniped oh. this bitch. I was going for the legs! Let me say that. I was going for the legs. It was not a, like, it was not you a didn't, fatal kill. You I'd didn't like specify? Believe. You did not I specify roll damage? As I grab the arm, I like, like, like moves the, moves the yeah. bottle up to the chest. I'm like, no! No, that was what I meant! But, yes. like, when Sten I said threw I was... threw it off. Yeah. Okay, I guess I just killed somebody. Yeah. Not the intention, folks. I will. I will point out that shooting someone in the leg is really just as dangerous because there's a lot of arteries there. But yeah. um, may I use my reaction to? Protect You've already used this... your reaction. That, oh, that was my reaction uh, yeah. to yeah. go yeah. after them. Yeah, to grab I them. Have a question. Both Do of I you. Double? So okay, For... what happens is Lunora starts to run, and Bjorn and Seagild both make a grab and. Uh, hold her in place as Tulami is like just sees Lunora start to run and quick draws shoots and the crossbow bolt pierces Lunora in the neck and oh. she slumps over and bleeds out while being held by Bjorn and Seagild. Uh, 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 I told the situation. Uh, this really isn't my Tell area me. expertise. Right, um, as this is happening, Stem's going to sort of, as the, the arrow goes in, he's going to sort of go down to try and check him, roll him over, and then when they notice the damage, just, he just sort of shakes his head and steps was unarmed. Why are we murderers? Why, why, why is this what we do? 
I didn't I, know this was going to happen. I didn't. Well, I now we know for next time uh, to <laughs> to use a little bit of caution and uh, to to not shoot people uh, just right away. Uh, to to Lami, you did nothing wrong. I don't want to say that you did something wrong and crush your spirit, but it was a bit hasty. <laughs> Don't you think? I would think that killing an unarmed person is more than wrong. Well, it's more it's more an accidental kind of thing. It's wrong, but it's I not wasn't it, your in fault. my defense, I wasn't trying to kill him. Toki's going to go over and uh, try to reach over to slap you on the shoulder to Lami and say, "Ah, you're not so bad." <laughs> Toki, well, now is not the time. I, I don't uh, know if I want him liking me right now. I think you're great. To, to Lami, it seems like maybe you're a little bit on edge. I can't imagine why. She says, glancing down at the dead body, I can assume now. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if maybe you know this person, but maybe in the future, trust your teammates before attacking. Please? I think I, I understand. I just need more resources because all I had was this bow. Well, it looks like you did pretty well with just a bow. While they're uh, talking, I'm going through her pockets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So make an investigation so, roll. Yeah, maybe if I got some rope, I could use that next time. Nat 20, baby! <laughs> We're just full okay. of good rolls today, and that's a problem. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem, yeah. The one time we wanted a bad roll, we just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Ectolina, you find uh, a couple of uh, pieces of a journal that have been ripped out um, and detailed on it. Uh, you have a list of names and things that uh, they've been searching for, and there's kind of flash marks and check marks through them. As well as you, uh, if you want to. Um, she's still wearing the traditional leather armor of an underhand officer. Salamander uh, skin. And then uh, uh, has a couple of short swords. And you've already taken her crossbow. Um, I want to take that armor. Okay. First of all. Could I take one of those short uh. swords? Yes. Oh. And um, in this list, is there anything that seems like, I know it's just like crossed off names and, and such, but is there anything that seems to stand out or that yes. I would recognize? Yes, the name Tulami that has been crossed out. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. I, I see you. What, uh, what, what, what are you talking about over there? Well, she was getting this little this little note. Uh huh. Um. There's a whole bunch of names that are just written and then crossed off, and they crossed off Tulani, you know, from earlier this morning at the waterfall. But uh, Tulani's oh. right here. It's fine. They thought. Well done. Uh. That's got I mean, interesting. It's probably best that they think that. You know, don't need to, like, tell them they're wrong. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, well, now that uh, this party's not returning, uh, they're probably going to send more. Do you think maybe might... we could mail that list to the person in charge so they know that I'm dead? You know, just uh, to let Well, do they accept mail down there? I don't mean to burst your bubble. But how are we supposed to get that information? Well, I, I know his address, so... What is that? She just says... <laughs> it's like sounds. You can't distinguish what it... <laughs> ah. Alright, how You're do you spell lying. that? You don't know the address. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll write it down for you later. <laughs> well, Let's go there, right now. Let's not. <laughs> can, can, I, can I see that list? 
think it's said. Thank you. She's just gonna look it over real quick. As this is all going on, Sten has gone completely silent, and it's obvious in his face he's very unhappy about what's happening. Um, he sort of he kneels down after the body's been desecrated and sort of closes the the, uh, the elves' eyes and says, "Hopefully, whatever gods you worship will accept you." Stands back up. Well, better get this to the pile, he says, sort of detachedly. Yes, sir. Anything we should do with the body? Allow me. I I don't really care. Honestly, I don't even... If she meant anything to me, it will no longer matter. Uh, you guys, oh my God. I don't really want to participate in rituals for my old fam, from my own family. So you can do what you want with the body. I don't want to hurt her, but I don't want to honor it, it either. Um, That's heavy. Oh, all right, that, that is your choice. Uh, well then. What now? Take the body to the yard. With right. the least, list of things. We did not find the cat, though. So. No, we did not. The game yep. will be tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe. Ezekiel will place a hand on Tuami's shoulder, <clears throat> and just give a small pat. I'll, I'll offer a little prayer in your stead. Don't worry. Thank you. Um, I do hope we find the cat, though, because that was the whole reason I came down here in the first place. Make a perception check, everyone. Was... It's been hanging out right behind us <laughs> <laughs> this whole time. Was there anything else on that note, by the way, other than, like, names, anything? No, it's a list of names. The only one you recognize is Tulami's. Okay. Neat. 19. All right. Uh, eight. Well. 16. 8. Bjorn and uh, Siegild, as you're standing there discussing taking this uh, corpse back to uh, the Jarl in the middle of the night, you feel a presence watching you from behind you back down the tunnel. Is that the cat? As you look over your shoulder, you see two feline eyes staring at you in the darkness. Oh yeah, that's the cat. Cat? I think the cat found us. Just makes sense. <laughs> uh, I, I guess we can delay that hoarder to go to the Yarrow, if it's right here, right? Well, and Bjorn's too long. Remember how I was just saying that you shouldn't shoot? Yes. We know that this thing has supposedly been killing, so I'm saying that maybe now wouldn't be a bad time. You have my crossbow is what I'm saying. Oh, I have your crossbow? It's a- oh, right, you're right. You're letting me borrow it. Sorry, I just assumed you gave it to Yours me. Yours already- Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, it's yours now, um, especially with this blood on your hands, but, um, go, Getting you that is what I'm saying. I, yes, I please, please around. shoot the cat. I turn around oh. and I shoot. <laughs> uh, Bjorn's been steadily <laughs> making his way, uh, while this conversation is happening, uh, as Talami is shooting towards the cat. Uh, I guess roll the hit there, Talami, <laughs> again. Uh... Uh, 21 to hit. Okay. So you watch as the crossbow bolt, um, you think hits dead in the center between the eyes of this cat, and then the eyes vanish. Where, where did it go? I, it's a uh, ghost. Can I, is it gone? Can I tell that it disappeared? It did disappear, yeah. Uh, well, I suppose with 
our prisoner meeting an untimely fate. We really don't have much of a reason to go back to the Jarl right now. No, you are absolutely right. Let's kill this cat. Let's go. I don't we, know if this is a to, mortal cat, though. We owe it to Buttercat, who died unjustly and unfairly, to get the cat. We owe it to the Buttercat and that nice old lady who made him as a friend because she was very lonely. Oh, that lonely old lady. We owe it to the own lonely old lady to get the cat. Do you think we'd be ma- able to make our own Buttercat? No. I don't know. Like if we dreamed hard enough? And worked really hard? Are you are you making fun of me because I liked oh. the Buttercat? Lena, 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 Lena. I'm not making fun of any, but I swear I just sound sarcastic a lot. <laughs> okay. Does seem to be a problem with you, yes. No, I just, I thought maybe we could, I, I honestly thought maybe we would be able to make one and now I'm a little disappointed. While that conversation is going on, Sieghild is going to uh, set the body up a little more properly and less splayed out on the floor. I know Sten already closed her eyes and stuff, but uh, she's going to offer a prayer for... um, Oh my gosh, I don't remember the name of which of the five the um, Dark Elves worship, but she is going to offer up a prayer for her in... Okay. Make a yeah. religion check. One. Thank you. But the, that's what she worships. It's me who doesn't know. It's a natural 20 for 22. She grew up in a church. Well, that's that's not the check whether or not you know. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> Tell you in a moment. All right. So what, what's everybody doing? Stan will... Uh... Hearing that the intention is to go back down the steps, we'll begin to d- descend with this torch held above. Um, we should get this cat dealt with before anybody else dies. Lena's got a fucking rapier in one hand and a flute in the other, and she's ready. Looking okay. around, trying to find a cat. Uh, I go up to Lena, I'm like, do you think this cat is Faye? Because it just disappeared. Like, it, it didn't seem to have a body. Maybe he's just talented. Made of rotten meat and butter. I think Faye would be the least of its qualities. Don't you think it would have stank? I wasn't sniffing. As you, it was a ghost. As you all are having this conversation, Toki uh, takes out a little lump of something from the Stoki's hull uh, that he apparently stashed, and... Uh, mm-hmm smashes it between his hands and then starts to draw on the wall with butter in the shape of a cat I'll summon a butter cat for you and starts to do this is this like when he thinks he knows magic but he doesn't know (laughs) certain magics Uh, he only knows kind of sort of some magics I can never tell if I'm being honest I'm kind of scared as to how this could go wrong honestly the worst comes to worst, he's just spreading butter on a wall. I think worst comes to worst, he summons a demon. Oh, that could be. I don't <laughs> I don't know how magic works. I was just assuming things. Could he summon he, a demon? <laughs> he could, I don't know. Uh, I don't Toki, know. Toki, do not summon a demon, please. That would not be very conducive. What? To what trying to do. A demon? I'm not summoning a demon. It's a butter cat. And then draws little whiskers on the wall. No demons have whiskers. We're safe. (laughs) Does it does it look like it's working? It doesn't look like it's working. No, there's no effect. Just him drawing butter on the wall. There's no Mm -hmm. magical. Uh, So I guess this was like that time where he thought he knew a certain magic and didn't know it. All right. Okay, maybe in the future, don't put butter in your pockets. I thought it was nice, nice bit of art on the walls. I, ha- I have That's some chalk. Out. You should give that to him next time instead. You're right. <laughs> Not butter. <laughs> what am I saying? I'll, I'll, I'll wait until we let you clean your... Toki, just what? asking for a friend. Did you bring any food uh, that isn't butter? Uh, just asking, because someone here might be hungry. Not naming any names. 
reaches in, r rummages around in his pocket, and then produces one of the rats that were killed. You know, I think they'll pass, whoever they are. Uh, we should probably visit your diet and maybe talk about it sometime. Is the rat dead? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Why, why don't we uh, go look Back. for this little ghost undead cat? There was another was chamber a... off. Sorry. That wasn't a short rest, was it? No. Or what? Oh, okay. No, would you I like to take sure. a short rest and just pause? Uh, no, no, I just wasn't sure based off of all the conversations we were having. No. Just you're, <laughs> as you're walking back down the tunnels, um, it it grows dark once again. There's no longer the green glowing, uh, the glowing uh, green uh, <laughs> ambience in the in the tunnels as you make your way through and um, as you pass by the three stone slabs where you had fought the rats and then you step over the trip wires that had been set by uh, the underhand officer. You approach a tunnel uh, that winds its way uh, to the left with a collapsed stand on one side, leaving you only one direction to flow. Um, it's Friday. Yes, yeah. we walk through the, the cold, snowy area. Is it still unnaturally cold in there? Has the snow sort of... Has anything changed since the ice um, spirit was smitten? So it is still cold from the draft uh, from outside, but it is not unnaturally cold as it was um, when the spirit was there. So much for snow in midwinter and midsummer, he says, as we head into the new tunnel. I kind of liked it, if I'm being honest. All right. And as you all approach the next uh, entrance into a uh, new chamber, you see that corpses are on the stone slabs in the center of this room. But these differ from the corpses you've seen previously. And for one thing, the, one of the corpses is a long dead northerner. And the other belongs to what appears to be a Svaltofar, and they look very freshly slain. They're uh, both sitting upright, staring at you. The no. Nordener turns, looks at you. Ha! Interlopers! Come forward and learn what it is to die on Nordener steel! And then the Svaltofar looks over, Nardy and Steel! We'll be lucky if these cheap blades don't break before we slay these fools! But come forward, intruders, and see what it is to die by fault of our hands! So I need everyone to roll initiative at this point. These two give me the vibes of those those Muppets that like constantly argue with each other. <laughs> 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 Like, are they giving us a choice? Is that uh, what's going on here? <laughs> I think we should probably get rid of both of them. One Sphinx <laughs> kills only with Norner steel. The other Sphinx kills only with Svaltovar steel. <laughs> Which Sphinx is lying? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we'll go on through it. Uh, ba -ba. I need initiative from Tulami? Um, it was 17. 17? Wait, no, 18. My B. Uh, ignore the roll that I just did. I just had to add oh, you to the queue. Oh, okay, mine was 17 then. Okay, so. Actalina? Uh, 15. Yeah. And Seagull, 22. Toki, 19. Bjorn? Uh, 5. Nice. Big and slow. Stan? Uh, 11. Okay. All right. Seagulled. Your turn. What are you doing? Got my sword. Got my shield. I'm gonna go at the first one I can get to. Okay. All right. Which... Oh, <clears throat> perfect. I can make it to one of them. Uh, just gonna charge right up and start swinging. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and swing to hit. God, I must play as Marshall Plus. 
<clears throat> Who needs oh, to man. think when you can swing? Seven to hit. Oh, doesn't quite. And as you approach the uh, Svaltafar, they'll bring up their sword to parry your blade. And you... <laughs> Would you like to do anything else? Come on, cousin. Don't be like that. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, Toki, hearing uh, the commotion up ahead. Oh, great! And then he'll run over next to you and then take a swing uh, with his staff. Uh, for a two to hit, he'll just swing wide and kind of trip and stumble over the stone slab. Ah, blah. Tulami, currently your turn. What are you doing? Okay, sick. I'm going to go up to the doorway. I'm assuming I heard their whole, like, spiel about kill me or kill him, one or the other. Or kill both of you, you know, that whole... So I get up to the door, I'm like, um, why not both? And I threw my two daggers to hit one. Okay. The other. Yeah, roll that. So, 15. Yep, that hits. You want to roll damage uh, on uh, the damage was, sorry, 12 for that one. Okay. 12. Are you applying sneak attack? Oh, it did. It does automatically, so you have to, like, look at the number oh, each time. okay. So it would have been seven. Okay. All and right. Do I do it again, or is the second one automatic? I think I would have to. The second hit is uh, seven. Okay. The second okay. does not hit. Okay. All right, so you see your first dagger connect and knock the uh, Svaltafar back a couple of steps. Ah! And then pull it out and then hold it up like it's a trophy. Um, I'm assuming I used all my movement to get there, so. Okay. Yeah, so that's all I can do right now. All right, the uh, one moves around uh, the left side and will take a swing at you, Tulami, since you're the closest individual, for a uh, natural 20. Oh, man. Wait, wait, I was muted. Um, can I use my reaction to impose disadvantage on that with my shield? Um, I was muted because I'm sick and I'm coughing a no, lot. No, I'm not <laughs> questioning that. Don't you have to be next five feet next to the enemy? Because uh, this is the other Draugr who oh, is... Oh, it's the other one. Yep. My bad. Yep. yep. Never mind. Yep. Well, let me double check if it's the enemy or Go the person look. being attacked. I'm not sure if it has to be the... I think it has to be the person that's attacking, so yeah, never mind. Okay. Or... Seven damage. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, ten damage, Chulami. Okay. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> the Draugr sticks its blade into you and laughs at you as it forces you to your knees. Um, <laughs> and that is the Draugr's turn. Exelina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Hmm. Um, can I, I see T Tulami go down. Can I go make like an untrained medicine check to try and stabilize him? Yes. Okay. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, that'll be your action. Okay. Um, and that is 10. Okay. Good enough. Just made it. Uh, you make your way over. And uh, as the blade is withdrawn, you immediately, like, ignoring the fact that you have a Trogger standing over you with a, uh, with a weapon, uh, you, st you start to apply uh, medical attention to Talami and stabilize Talami for the time being. Um, all right. And after that, it is the other Draugr's turn. Uh, this one standing next to uh, Seagild, and it is going to swing at Seagild. 
for a, an 11 to hit, which I don't think hits, right? You're a fighter, so it's not going to hit. Okay. Uh, Sten, <laughs> Sten uh, it is currently your turn. What are you doing? So everybody's rushed ahead of Sten and yeah. he's sort of left and he's heard the, uh, the echoing voices of the, uh, the recently dead. And so am I able to move partially, do something and then do the rest of my move or does it have to be on my movement? And then no, you can break it up. <clears throat> cool. So um, I will move here mm -hmm. um, and he's, uh, he's got one hand free and the torch in the other hand and he's, he's going to grab at his, uh, the, the ball horn he's got and he's going to say, let swallow you. And then he's going to fire guiding bolt at the Noronir um, uh, Draugr as he, you know, sending a bolt of uh, divine energy. Okay, the one standing over uh, Ulami, right? If that's the uh, the Noronir yep. one. It is. Cool. Let's kill the raider. Um, that's fine. Sorry, I gotta find that. Nice. Sacred flame. Sorry, if I said guiding bolt, I meant sacred flame. Sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a... Different spell. Deck safe. Yeah, it doesn't make it. What's the damage? <laughs> Two? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. All right. Um, you see as the, uh, in the mouth, you see a puff of uh, radiant flame. And it goes... Would you like to do anything else? Yeah, I'm going to try and move up. Um, can I... I think I've moved 10, 15 here, and then... You uh, can get past Ectolina, yeah. yeah. So, so I'll move here. You can and, impose uh, yourself between... Yeah, yep. I'm just going to try and uh, move in with uh, a torch, trying to ward it off. Probably yep. not going to be scared of it. That's my turn. Okay. All right, Bjorn, currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, well, uh, seeing and hearing that, I'm going to rage, and I'm going to smash the Norner's face in. Um, can I make it there, or is it difficult terrain with uh, two people in front of me? I'd say you're fine raging uh, to just move past if you'd like to move... Uh, to stand over Ectolin or uh, Tulami, I'm going to move Tulami's token, and you can stand right there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You're going to swing on this, uh, and... Draugr? Yep. Okay. More meaty swing. Uh, that is uh, a 10. Not quite. So, uh, you swing, and uh, it brings around its sword. <laughs> <laughs> Deflecting your incoming strike. Would you like to do anything else? Uh, nope, that's all I got. All right. We're doing great. Seagild, currently your Yelling turn. It. What are you uh, doing? Seeing that everybody else jumped onto the other one that attacked and took down Dulami, uh, she's going to immediately start to go for that one as well but everybody was already way ahead of her so she's going to turn her attention back to the one that she was already attacking and attack it my descriptions are really good today if you can't tell <laughs> yeah you've been working on it they're huh? flawless i don't know i'm, I'm so fucking good today I understood everything that's I called to confidence <laughs> confidence 19 to hit yeah hits go ahead and roll damage Yay. Uh, nine slashing damage. Okay. So you bury your sword into the shoulder of this Draugr, and you actually see its arm just pop off um, as you have cut it pretty deep and exposed a lot of the uh, flesh of the recently killed Svaltafar. I'm um, still standing there with his sword, though. Just kind of staring at you. Wonderful. Um, and she is actually going to step over here. Mm -hmm. That way she can use her reaction if she needs to. And Toki. But okay. she does take an opportunity attack if you would like to take that. Because she stepped out of range. Yep. Uh, Ten to hit misses the swing as it tries to lunge after you but doesn't quite make it. Um, Toki uh, takes the staff and swings um, and and says, I'm gonna get you! And then uh, completely misses because I rolled a natural one, uh, big rip uh, to Toki here, um, as he stumbles and uh, falls over um, next to the stone slab. I made him disappear. I'll just put the prone on him. Okay. 
All right, uh, Tulami, you've been stabilized, so you don't have to make a death saving throw. Um, now it is the Draugr's turn, as it turns and faces Sten. For a 12 to hit as it goes low to high. The blade scrapes across his chainmail, and he manages to twist away just in time to, to not take any damage. Okay. Sick. Ectolina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Um, who, who, who? Okay, so I'm going to stand up from where I was hurriedly bandaging Tulami. Um, super pissed off that he's now down. Ectolina's going to take out her crossbow and just kind of like scream a little bit, kind of like she thinks she's scary, but she's really not and fire a bolt at the Draugr in front of Sten. Okay. I'm gonna impose a higher DC because it's you have somebody in between you. But go ahead. Uh, <laughs> nine. Okay. Um, your bolt goes wide and collides with the, uh, the Barrow's wall. Whew. All right. Trissa's teeth, watch where you're firing that thing. And this uh, other Spultifar Draugr is going to laugh at Toki. <laughs> Step onto the stone slab and follow Seekilt, um, swinging overhead um, for a 24 to hit. That'll do. Or. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. <laughs> Uh, nine damage. Okay. As it connects with your, uh, right under the, sh right under the, the neck here, um, along the, the collarbone, uh, slashing you. Um, you're still up? Still up. Okay. All right. It's but a pretty deep ow. wound. It's pretty bad. Owie. Sten. Owie. Currently your turn. What are you doing? Okay. And, uh, I'll get attacked if I try and cast in combat, right? No, um, no, you can cast right directly next to you. You're thinking of, uh, old school D&D. &D. My bad. <laughs> I'm an old guy. Someone's yeah. showing their age. Oh. <clears throat> um, you have disadvantage if you're casting next to someone, though. I'm gonna use, uh, Bless. I'm gonna, he's gonna hold up, his, um, hold, he's gonna take another blast of the horn, and there's gonna be a, a radiant sphere that expands outwards as he, as he intones, uh, yep. and just a silent prayer to Latrissa. Uh, and then I'm going to choose my three allies to get um, to add a d4 to their uh, to their attack rolls or saving throws um, until the end of the encounter. Yeah. Um, and that's my last spell of the day. And then he's going to draw his shield. Um, he's going to sort of pull the shield over into his empty hand and sort of hunker down ready for the next strike. Okay. And that's uh, Ectolina, Bjorn, and Seagild for your three? Yes, sorry. It's uh, Toki's on the ground. <laughs> just, just leave him there. Um, Bjorn, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing again. I'm gonna bring the blade over my head and like bring it down onto him. Okay. Uh, I'll show you swing the... it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the strength of a true Norner. All of him near, guide my blade, and then swing. And then I add a D4 to that, too? That's yep. right, yep. Uh, let's see, 14 plus a D4. You hit. Oh, nice. Roll damage. Rolling damage. Uh, 13. Okay, describe how you uh, kill this Draugr. So, uh, Bjorn brings the blade, swinging motion up back behind his back, and then cleaves down, and it kind of, like, gets stuck in like the neck like collarbone area and then he just rips it back all right you see uh some of the bits and parts of the draugr and a puff of uh dust from how ancient uh this northerner is uh just scatter along and bounce off and clink against the stone floor and then he immediately turns his head towards the other one you're next all right seagild currently your turn what are you doing? You just saw this uh, Draugr just poof in front of you. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Um, Seekhold is, first of all, going to use her bonus action and use Second Wind to regain some HP. Um, so she mutters a very quick prayer under her breath, and you can see a very faint glow for a moment as a little bit of the wound begins to self-heal for five whole HP. Mm-hmm. Well, which I will fucking take. Um, and then she kind of like cracks her neck and goes to swing at this guy again okay. for her action. For a 24 to hit. That definitely hits, yeah. Roll damage. Seven damage. Describe how you killed this Draugr. Uh, she just, I think, this is the uh, fresh one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. I think she is just going to probably stab it right in the gut and just tear it in half. I don't okay. know why I like tearing things in half. It's fun. <laughs> Satisfying. There's oh. a symmetry to it. Um, the, uh, Svolterfar, um, is pulled into two pieces and then they both collapse next to you and, uh, Toki at that point, uh, gets back up and says, I could have done that and brushes him up down. We have exited combat and we're going to take a break here, but before we do, I forgot to thank Epidemic Sound for the ambiance and music that we have going on right now. So thank you, Epidemic Sound. And we'll thank be back you. in 10 full minutes. We're going to break. Okay, hey, bye. All right. So you all have defeated the two uh, Draugr in this part of the Barrows. What are we doing? Seekhild uh, is immediately turning back to the way they came and then looking back down at the fresher Svoltfar and then looks back again. Should Jean's we be mom. worried? No, the... the That's the freshest one. one. I said fresher, fresher. (laughs) Um, Should we be worried? About Draugr? About the one that we left. Oh. uh, This one's awfully fresh. That's a good question. I didn't even know Salt of Heart could be Draugr. I thought it was more of a Norner thing. I think any who meet death with dishonor or evil in their hearts will rise as a Draugr, stand in tones. That's fair. Right. I'm going, I'm going to go check on that. We left him awfully close to the exit, which is a little too close to the city, so... And she Whoa. turns around, she starts heading back. Well, we should probably head I'm with her. I'm immediately going to scoop up Talami with his armpits in the crooks of my elbows. Do you need And just start waddling back. <laughs> I got him, don't worry. We'll bring you back right. up to the surface. It's fine. I, I have this. I got it. I trust you. And Bjorn's gonna follow behind Ectolina. Okay. Sten will just watch them go and then he'll look back and he'll reach at the, uh, the bisected chest of one of the undead and he'll pull out the dagger there before sheathing into his belt and following after, scooping up the crossbow as he um, withdraws with the rest of the group, watching his back, friend. Um, okay. So we're exiting the barrows once again. Making yeah. sure that the uh, dead person that we left in the first room is still there. Yes, so you uh, <clears throat> return and you find uh, Lil Nura still... Uh, Quite dead for the time being. Not reanimated yet. Whew. Okay, um, someone else, someone else, get that one. I'm, I'm dragging this one. Do, do you do you need help carrying the child? No, 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 no. It's okay. I got it. I got it. Are, I I can carry both of you if you want. <laughs> Are you talking to me? I can't do- are you going to carry me? If, if you you look a little tired, I I could. Oh, uh, you know I am super tired. I I. Oh, don't drop! Don't ready. drop! Don't drop too, mommy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay. I am super tired. I need to be carried. So, Seekhild will uh, scoop up both Tulami and, um, oh my God. I'm sorry, uh, blanking. Um, 
name. Selena. Hold on, it's Selena. Selena. It's Selena. It's that's me. See, Hilda's is good with names. It's me. <laughs> um, scoop them both up, uh, and then look down to the body. Um, would <laughs> would we know anything about maybe how long it takes to become a Draugr? <clears throat> Make a uh, mm, religion check. I rolled a nat 20 earlier. Would that count? Nope. Okay. I rolled a 12. Uh, you're not quite certain how long it takes uh, for a Draugr to rise again. Uh, typically, uh, Draugr are associated with uh, foul deeds in the past, as uh, Stan has indicated, and are usually driven by greed of some kind. So you don't know if there's a ritual involved or if it's just something that happens. Mm hmm I think it's a good idea to bring this one back to town, or, hmm. We should present it to the Jarl as much as it tires me to say so. I'm gonna fall okay. asleep in Sighild's arms. Oh, okay. Well, one of you <sighs> grab the body and I'll hold on to these two, and we should get this one some medical attention. We should go. All right. Shh. Shh. Oh, oh. She's sleeping. Sorry. <laughs> so we collect the body and head out. Stan scoops up in a fireman's carry, and uh, it's quite light, I guess, because they're not that tall. Uh, our, uh... Stuff of power it's like shorter than a human, or yeah, they're average. I feel like I'm they're sure a little bit shorter. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, they look so. And we're we're heading back to the entrance, right? Yeah, heading back to town. Okay. <clears throat> so as I you so. <laughs> as you approach the uh, the corpse store, you find that it has been closed. Those stone slabs of the corpse store are shut on you. Well, wake up when we come to an abrupt stop. Uh, the abrupt stop. What? Give me that was very comfortable. You are so warm. Bjorn, oh, big guy. Thank you. Yeah, Get those I could, open. I could try. Uh, give me a moment. Um, and Bjorn's gonna try and open up the slab, the corpse door. Okay, athletics check. Uh, that's me, Mr. Athletics. It's a 25. Yeah, boy. Mr. Athletics, oh my. <laughs> All right, make a, uh, so as you place your hands onto the, the stone slab, make a dexterity saving throw. Cool, I am not great at those. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, it's not looking good, Chief. It's looking the worst it possibly could at a nat one. And just to double check, you are not at a level of barbarian where you have advantage on dexterity saving throws, correct? Correct. <laughs> I do not have danger sense yet. No. I'm praying for you, my friend. Goodbye. I can't protect you. I have two people in my arms. So as you. Why that scene from Jurassic Park where you know, the, the fence? <laughs> <laughs> so as you place your hands on the stone slab and you start to you start to feel it uh, nudge a little bit, and then all of a sudden you feel your hands grow quite cold, and then you feel a flash of cold uh, energy overcome you, and you all see behind him just a uh, basically a a poof of uh, snowflakes hit him in the face and Bjorn is now stuck touching the stone slabs the corpse door does resistance to cold help in any way shape or form you are incapacitated oh. well 
I tried, and uh, it didn't work. No, you can't talk. You're <laughs> oh, incapacitated. Inca knocked out. Knocked out. Yes, you oh, are standing there. Down? No, he is currently stuck to the corpse door with his hands. Bjorn. 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 Oh dear. You gonna push that? <laughs> Seekill will gently set down both people in her arms, give Tulami a gentle pat, and then go and check on Bjorn and see what the fuck is going on. Careful of Ulder's breath. He must be warded against interference. Okay. So as you approach uh, Bjorn, you see that um, his hands like slowly um, disconnect from the uh, the corpse door, and then he's just sort of standing there and starts to lurch backward. Oh, oh, I I got you there, bud. Um, she'll grab onto him and kind of like guide him back if he isn't just like fainting. <laughs> Yep, so he can be set down on the ground. Uh, he is currently knocked out, and now you have two knocked out party members, so. Well. She looks at the door. Uh, does Does it look like it is enchanted in some way? You would guess by the reaction that just occurred the action the mm -hmm. magical effects it it's not something that you've ever seen before so one would discern that that was very magical in nature uh, damn wild quick question being incapacitated does that bring my hp down to zero or does it just stay where it's at yeah you're you're at zero you got knocked out cool. what's everybody doing i can't carry him <laughs> it's dense oh, i, I, I He's he's a bit big, but I, I I I got him. I got him. Uh, uh how um, heavy where... would this door be? Probably so it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's made of. Um, it started to budge. Uh, with Bjorn rolling a uh, twenty-five. Um, unfortunately, no one uh, inspected the corpse door for the other elements of it. Uh, but it was quite uh, heavy, so it's maybe like. Mm, what is that, like five or six inches? Um, thick? Um, so is it like skewed off to one side or? No, the, both slabs on the corpse door are shut. So he didn't really budget much. It started to move before the activation of the magical effect. Okay. All right, can I try and see where the effect came from without, without touching it, just go up and like. It came from the door. Inspector Gadget. And behind you, you see a glowing green light further down the tunnel. Down the tunnel? Yes. Hmm. This does not bode well. This is bad. This is not good. Um, this is not good. This is not good at all. I think what we need... It's just a little optimism. I think we need to maybe just rest up for a minute and keep keep an eye on that and make sure we can get our friends back on their feet. What do you say? I don't know. That light is looking at me kind of funny. That light is looking at us kind of funny, but... You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it down there. What I like even less is our two unconscious friends down on the ground here. If I'm being perfectly honest. I can keep watch if you want to catch your breath. And he says, wave at him, sort of gesturing with the uh, crossbow he's picked up from the downed Kamami. I think it'll do us good. I all right, let's tend to our friends here. You are right. You're right. You're so right. Okay. Sten's okay. gonna overwatch down the uh, passage out of the, and the Overwatch. Whoa. Okay. All right. And we're gonna remain here for. Are we doing a, a short rest then? 
Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll me a perception if you're standing watch, and then uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Going to stand watch, though I don't like that light. Um, Seekill during this, if possible, is going to try and help Tulami and uh, Bjorn just get get back to health. Uh, she's no cleric or medic, but she she knows a little bit about it. Okay. So she's gonna try. Okay. What did everybody roll for perception? <laughs> I forgot. Twelve. Five. Yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> I rolled in that one. Okay. Uh, Exalina, you can hear uh, down the tunnel some whispering. <gasps> this is what the old man heard. This is what he was talking about. I don't <laughs> like it at all. Oh, boy. I think you should take a more positive attitude about it. That's not what I... That, do you remember, Toki, do you remember when you said whispering you could hear in your ears? Yes. Yes, you remember? Old man. I'm not an old man. These ears are young. I hear everything. And you heard You heard it? Yes. Do, so do you believe me. Right do you hear it right now? Because I hear it right now. Yes, I hear it right now. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a whisper here, and it... It, I don't think it likes us very much. I can't tell, but it's scaring me a lot. Whispers can't hurt us, okay? <laughs> no, but things that whisper can hurt you. There's only one way in and out of this chamber. We'll oh, don't you. say that, we're trapped. Oh, don't think of it that way. You're surrounded by friends. We've got your back. Don't worry about it. <sighs> okay, whatever you say. Come here, it's okay. okay. Give her a little... Oh, hugging a little pack. And then continue tending to the other two. Okay. Jalami and Bjorn, I need you to roll... Do you have hit dice left? No. I don't think so. Jalami, you're back at one. I only have one, and I used it last time. <laughs> Since yes, I was today. helping them, can I help them regain more HP in some kind of way? Roll a d4. Cool, I will take it. Have you both used your hit die? I think so, yeah, because we all took a short rest, right? Yeah. Yep. I used it. Go ahead it. and roll a d4 then. Four. Me yeah. too, like... Oh, you both had 5 HP then. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Alright. Thank you, kind and benevolent DM. Hey, you know, I trapped you in the burrow, so I mean, it's the least I can do. So, an hour has passed, uh, you continue to hear the whispering, and once in a while, Toki will like, look at it and be like, ah! But other than that, there's not a lot of noise going on. When I, when I wake up, my, I'm immediately going to realize that I passed out, <laughs> and pat myself down and be like, Did you get my daggers? And I'll flip it, and sort of almost cut himself and drop it on the, the, the slab, and go, uh, <laughs> Yes. I picked up one of them, and here's your crossbow. He sets, sets it down on the... Oh. Thank you. I did so not I'll... want to have to go back. Use it properly. Well, about that, Tulami, I've got some... I don't want to call it bad news, but I have some news. We may have to go back. Why? Is, is the door open? Did I do it? Are, are we out? Oh, honey, um... No. 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 Oh, that's we opened it so hard that it closed again. Oh, that does sound like something I would do. And you passed oh. out. From working my muscles too hard. I, th I think it's enchanted. Oh. I think we got, um... Uh, I think the, that our hosts want to keep us in here. I don't want to say that we're trapped because that's an awful negative way of looking at it, but... Right. I think we should move with caution. Maybe now that you're both awake, we can take a more careful look at the door. And if that's still not an option, then we can backtrack and see what else we can do. 
Do the what whispers I've... sound like they're coming from somewhere? Yes, they, they sound. Just... Yes, they sound like they're coming from deeper in the barrows. I I have a, I have a great idea. Well, what right? is it? Here? Well, Toki and I can hear the sounds of the whispers. Uh-huh. Why don't we point the way and figure out where scary whispers are coming from? I think that's very magical and suspicious. All right, but probably would bring us to our hosts. And Who are our um, hosts again? M- more Draugr, I would imagine. That makes sense. Who knows? This night has been all over the place. I know, I'm pretty tired myself. Don't As, know um, much... Sorry, go ahead. Don't know how much I got left in the old tank. As um, Eklina says that they're going to take point and lead us on, uh, Stem will cast uh, resistance. He'll say, you know, slap on the sword and it's like, have courage. There's nothing down here that we haven't faced already, I think. So to help them with their fear, you feel infused with, uh, with a sort of... The fears perhaps maybe feel a little bit more distant. I think he'll slap down on the back. That's the spirit. All right. Sounds like a plan. Well, they're distant. All right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Pass the torch to them as well and draw my axe. All right. And you all are proceeding back the way you had come. So you mm-hmm. approach the area once again where uh, you had slain the two Draugr. Um, and there is a tunnel leading uh, to your north, and there is one leading uh, to your south up some steps. The one leading up to the steps has a has no illumination. The one leading to the north has a bit of a gle- greenish glow in the tunnel. Maybe the stairs lead to the surface. Another entrance, perhaps. I think we should go north. We should go to this one on our right. We should follow the light. We don't need to go back up. We're all okay. We'll be fine. Right? Right. I, I figured we were following the light is what we were doing, so... Mm. Let's do it. We'll go this way. And we'll right, go to the then. next one. Uh, Yarnal, <laughs> follow Ectolina's lead. Cool. So you're just going to follow right behind Ectolina. Uh, shield up, just in case. Who's in the front? Seekhild will be up front, but letting Actelina point the way if she wants to. So the tunnel narrows and uh, up ahead, so it would be, you would have to be like side by side. Oh no. Okay. All right. So as you approach. <clears throat> A 15 by 15 uh, chamber up ahead. You see a man standing in the center of the chamber. And he looks up with confusion in his eyes at all of you. Oh, my name is Etri. Etri Enerson. I was a fisherman. I drew fish from the sea. My name is Etri. Pulling out swords slowly. My name is Etri. Scotty says, I'm to kill you. And then he steps forward and swings at you, Seagild. Mm-hmm. Right, 22 to hit. <laughs> even, though, even though I was ready and waiting. <laughs> you want to swing out of his well? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. 19 to hit. Okay, roll damage. Cool. Five (coughs) higher damage. Okay. Uh, You both connect with each other. Um, 
right as it slips past your shield and you take uh, three slashing damage and describe how you kill uh, this Draugr. Uh, I think she just comes right up from down below and probably just chops a leg off and just tumbles down okay. into a heap. And after that, the uh, man's neck flops back and his skull hits the ground and you, <coughs> you see a bit of a, a spatter as uh, most of its uh, head turns to dust. So ends that tree. You have in front of you uh, a stairwell that leads to the north and a passage with the green light that eats, leads to the to the east. To the oh. east. The east. All right. To the east. Then I'll watch the north exit as we we go, and I'll join the back of the the, the line. So sort of watch the rear to see if anything comes through the door as the everybody files east. Yeah. I forgot to actually mark that I took a short rest. Not that it matters, but oh, it's gonna master matter. Oh, I already used up all of my. Oh, actually, I didn't use. I regained my second wind. I'm gonna use up my second wind right now okay. for no particular reason. For no particular reason. That's right. For no particular reason. Cool. I will take that 9 HP back. Okay. All right. Feeling more hale and hearty as you approach. So you're winding your way through, and the tunnel opens up before you into a large chamber, longer than it is wide, and the space is taken up almost entirely by a Drakkar ship. Rising from the hole are five Draugr. The middle one, whose chainmail and shield set him apart from the rotten scraps worn by the other four. I am Hargil, the Bloodless. This is my vessel, on which I raided the Erelesh coast in centuries long past, and you dishonor it with your presence. Prepare to die for this desecration. I mean, we can leave. You'll roll an initiative first. <laughs> oh wow that's good for y'all okay all right so uh exalina what'd you get not 20 Ooh. Uh, 23 Ooh. okay all right uh tulami 23, not a nat 20. No. The yarn. 18. Okay, Sea Guild. 8. Okay, and Toki, I forgot to roll. I shall roll right now. Hey, oh, 11. Okay. All right. Uh, Ectolina. rolled a 1. You rolled a 1? Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't populate. Dang. Okay. So it's a total of 1? Uh, it was a one plus one, I think, so two. two. Okay. All right. Ectolina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Um. Hmm. Okay, so we all see those three guys in the front, right? Yes. Okay. Um. All right, cool. How, how, how do I measure again? The ruler. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Okay, cool. So from back here, uh, Lena's going to see all three of these guys just ready for us and um, pull out her flute. And kind of similar to the dog whistle, is going to play a really low discordant note and cast Bane on all of them. All three of them. Okay. All right. And that's a what? Dexterity, uh, dex dexterity saving throw? Charisma. Charisma. All right. So what's the DC? 14. Okay. 
Uh, the one on the left does not make it. Um, I will use this one, this symbol. He is banned. And... Okay. All right. So those two in the uh, front and middle do not make it. All right. And that's a negative uh, 1d4, right? Yeah. For all attacks, abilities? Attacks and saving throws. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. Would you like to do anything that's else? That's it. Okay. All right. Hey, Tulami, currently your turn. What are you doing? I'm going to push my way. Oops. Push my way forward. Mm hmm. Um, if I'm here, can I reach melee? So uh, it's going to uh, require that you make an athletic check if you're trying to climb up. Okay. Would that be my action? Mm. Since that's my whole movement. For rogues and barbarians, I'm going to say no. Okay. So that's... I I want to climb up and then use my short sword. Um, the one on my left. Okay. Roll an athletics or an acrobatics check for me. Okay. Oh. As Talami moves off ahead, the Sten will be like, Kid, don't! You're in no state to fight! What'd you roll? That is a good acrobatics roll, though. HB 23. Okay, you make it up, no problem. You are now currently standing on the lip of the Drocker ship. Okay, so what I want to do, I hear, I hear Sten. <clears throat> he makes a point. <laughs> so if possible, I would like to slash at the guy on my left, mm -hmm. and then immediately make a backflip exit. <laughs> You're gonna take two attacks of opportunity. Okay, so uh, go That's ahead and fine. swing, I swing have the hit. Dexterity. I'm okay with that. Go ahead and swing the hit. Um, sorry, it's very hard to scroll. Uh, swing to hit is oh, on that one. Are you kidding me? Oh. Uh, fine. So you miss uh, with your swing uh, on the <clears throat> center uh, draugr, and as you are moving to uh, exit, make your exit. Is that an acrobatics too? Does a 12 hit you? No. Okay. The draugr in front of you moves to swing at you um, and just misses as well as the other one. So they both swing on you and you kind of slide unceremoniously down the side of the ship, sort of clinging to it. That's fine with me. <laughs> and uh, back up. Yeah. All right. Bjorn. Can I just shout out, see, I could do it. Bjorn, currently your turn. What are you doing? I'm in the, the same boat as Tulami, but uh, I'm big. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, Bjorn's going to... Does it look like they have, like, ranged weapons? You see on the Draugr in the center, he has a um, sling of several javelins. <clears throat> I don't do ranged combat very well. Um, Bjorn's going to move kind of would be uh, would it be possible to throw an axe next to Talami, like, or is the ship too high to breach that? Are you? What do you mean? What are you trying so to I've, do? So I would like to range throw like a hand axe at, at a Draugr. Of, at a Draugr. Yeah, that's fine. But sure. If I move up to Talami, would that be too close? Or would no? They, like, you... Would they get like? Are they getting like cover from being down here? Right, so they are harder to hit because only half of their bodies are exposed to you down on the on that level. Right. Yes. Well, I guess I'll try it. Yeah, which one? Uh, I'm gonna throw it at the center one. Okay. 
Go ahead. Uh, they don't have an option to. Is it? Uh, it's a dexterity check if you're throwing it, right? No. Or can it still be strength? No, for com. I, I sometimes do that, but for combat, it's just a two hit. So go ahead and roll right. the attack. Uh, <laughs> Ten. Does not hit. So the axe hits the side of the Drawker ship uh, just below the Draugr. Why don't you come down here and fight like a real man? And that's that's all that's all I got. Okay. And with that, uh, the first Draugr minion uh, will bend over and go ahead and tumble down, um, landing on its feet next to Talami. Hear your call, step over to you, and swing with its sword. Ah! And roll a, a two. Uh, most certainly doesn't hit. Don't need to apply the bane there. Um, but A for effort on his part. The next Draugr is also going to flip over um, as in, like, just bend over and just kind of tumble down, land, get up, and then step over to you, Bjorn, and also swing at you. For a natural one. Um, so you bring around your sword to parry, and as soon as the sword connects, um, its wrist actually just pops off, and then the sword goes, like, that way. All right. Toki's turn. Toki is going to say, yeah, and then run over trying to swing his staff as Toki does. Going to miss terribly, unfortunately. I'm just rolling terrible today. All right, Seagild, currently your turn. What are you doing? Looking at the uh, ship, do I see any, like, I don't fucking know what they're called, uh, things that let you get up on them? Rigging. Sure. There is no rigging on this ship. Great. Uh, that answers my question. Thank you. <clears throat> um, cool. Sieghild is then going to... He said it's going to be an action to climb up for anyone that is not a barbarian or rogue. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I think she is going to go ahead and um, push past and try and climb up so that she can get level with uh, Mr. Get Out of My House. But also, I locked the doors. So, <laughs> do, do I need to roll? Yes, athletics check. So you're climbing up to stand next to him? Yes. Okay. I got a nine. Okay, as you make your way up, um, it takes you uh, longer than expected, and you sort of slip a little bit. You manage to get up top, but all of your movement is expended and have taken your action. Wonderful. Let me just double check my bonus sections, and I got nothing cool. Okay. She is going to brace herself. Okay, the uh, Draugr will uh, turn to you and take a swing and slash at the air as you duck under it pretty easily. It's going to score up to you and say, finally, a real fight. Uh, the Draugr behind you will step up and slash at you with no regard for honor. Wow, a natural one. Um, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> swings and... You turn right into it with your shield, no issue. And the last Draugr, since you're the only one on the ship, moves over and swings at you again for a 20 to hit. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Do. That'll do, Draugr. That'll do. <laughs> for, <laughs> for slashing damage as it brings its sword around. And Stan, it is currently your turn. Uh, you see Seaguild up top on the ship battling three Draugr, two Draugr on the below level where you're currently standing. What are you doing? Uh, so Sten is sort of taking a praise of the situation. He sees like the chaos going on as one of the Draugr's arms gets popped off. Another one sort of stumbles. He's like, Kavir's luck is with us. And um, sort of surges forward uh, with his axe to swing at 
this one here. Get up there, he says to, to Bjorn, mm -hmm. going up at Sighild. We'll take these ones down here. And then he's going to swing at uh, the uh, the Draugr here that he's just moved up to. Mm -hmm. Done. And I will swing my battle axe. It's not losing my job. 16. Okay, connects. Uh, that's two-handed, so it'll be seven damage. Okay. Why would it do more damage with one-handed? That's weird. Because it rolled both at the same time. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, go ahead and describe how you kill that Draugr. So is this the one without the hand? The wrist popped off, I yeah. think. So, so he runs, comes up and uh, is he brings his axe two-handed over his head again, and it turns to try and block, and it just looks at its wrist and then looks at me and then gets bisected <laughs> down to like mid sternum, and then I pour it out of the, the dust, yep. uh, dusty collapsing corpse. All right. Ectolina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Um, I'm gonna, so this one on the outside of the three that were right there, um, how far is that? Yeah, th um, that's a weird ruler. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna move in front of that one. Sure. Wait. My clicky things not work. Work. You have to select the box. Yeah. You want to go right here. Um, I want to go right here. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna use. I'm gonna try to use beguiling gaze on him. On which one? The one that's like on the uh, edge of the ship, right there. Okay. Uh, beguiling gaze remind me does that require an intelligence or something or um, charisma saving throw or what is it um I have it pulled up hold on <clears throat> other page um so wisdom mm -hmm. and the DC 8 plus 2 plus 4 so 8 plus 14 six, 14 yeah makes it so it just kind of stares down at you in undead confusion Okay. <laughs> equally Can't help confused. that it has bad taste. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to equally confused stare back at him and slowly pull my flute up to my mouth, start playing a, a happier song as a bonus action to cast Bardic on Sighield. Okay. Thank you. And that's a D6? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Tulami, currently your turn. What are you doing? Slash with my short sword at the one of the draugr in front of me. Mm -hmm. Get sneak attack damage as well. Um, I'm going to do that. Ooh, dear. that Why would you get snake attack? Uh, because of Bjorn. There's an ally with him five feet. Okay, right? Or... Yeah, Bjorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that is 19 to hit. Yep, that hits. And that is 11 damage. Describe how you kill that Draugr. Um, so he's antagonizing Bjorn, and I want to cut off the hand that has the weapon. Mm -hmm. And then as it clatters to the ground, I'm going to uh, stick it through his chest. All right. And pull up and fail because I'm not strong. Okay, and the uh, Draugr sort of expires against the ship and slumps down and then becomes motionless. Would you like to do anything else? Um, I'm going to jump up onto the ship. Okay, uh, acrobatics check or athletics check for you. It is a 18. Okay, you make it up, no problem. All right. Bjorn, currently, Bjorn currently your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, Bjorn is going to take Sten's advice and uh, follow Tulami's lead and take a wild leap up the side of the ship up to where the the main Draugr is. Yeah, what are you trying to do exactly? Just leap up next to him or tackle so, the Draugr or what are you doing? So I'm going to uh, leap up next to him so I can get in <clears throat> melee range. Okay, you would. Okay. Sure, so go ahead. Like, roll so athletics. 
climb the side of the ship like Tulami did to get up there to strike. Sure. Use your hand axe as a as a as a handhold. <laughs> and you get advantage on your attack since we're on either side of him. I forgot the oh, word. Is there flanking? Sure. Uh, is there flanking? Sure. Great. All right. So athletics. That is uh, a twenty-four. Okay. Yeah, you make it up no problem. You land uh, next to the Draugr, and you now currently power over the Draugr. What are you I'll doing? show you how true Norinor does battle. And then I'm going to swing at him with my great sword. Okay. Do that. So the first roll is a 25. That definitely hits, yeah. Uh, crit. I do not crit. So damage uh, 10 slashing damage Oof. okay so you bury your greatsword into the side of the draugr not able to bring its shield around in time and uh, there's a big puff of uh, uh, refuse just <laughs> that pops out of the draugr side as you have clearly caused quite a bit of damage alright <laughs> right and do 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 I can remember this real quick. So it's Toki's turn. Let me check something real quick. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, beep, boop. Mm. He is... Okay. He's going to reach over and uh, uh, touch uh, Sten and has guidance and he's gonna give him a nod and say you can handle this and now you have guidance then all right Seaguild, currently your turn what are you doing Seaguild is going to nod at uh bjorn just say that's the way and then she is going to attack um attack the one right in front that he also attacked yeah. uh, main drawer with a 16 to hit yeah that hits mm -hmm. hmm. a four slashing damage four slashing damage okay all right so uh you take a chunk out of the drawer and it wobbles a little bit um as it loses its footing and it is going to first swing back at you um sea guild ah! for a natural 20. <gasps> You are incapacitated. Cool. As it connects with you, and after burying its sword in you, we'll turn around and strike at Bjorn. For a natural one. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Beautiful. It's got a sword wedged in signal, and it tries to turn around and fall out. It's like... <laughs> and that is its turn. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, Draugr is going to step over uh, Seaguild and join its compatriots, and this time lunging for Tulami for a 19 to hit. Hi. My boy! For four slashing damage um, as it connects with the sword and uh, leans in and gives you that. <laughs> Alright, and the other Draugr minion is going to attempt to surround Bjorn. Uh, moving in with its sword for only a nine to hit, so a swing and a miss for the other Draugr around Bjorn. Then, currently your turn, what are you doing? So, as uh, you notice, is that the sword has got like wedged briefly in Sigil's shield because they obviously brought it perhaps up enough. He's gonna say, Strike now! Hit it while it's undistracted! Like, because obviously Bjorn's turned to, to face the two minions, and he's gonna use Commander Strike on uh, Bjorn to allow him to attack again with a plus d6 to his damage if he hits. All right. So moment, the moment of truth. I'm gonna swing at the 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 one who took down Sea Killed. Okay. 25. Wow. Okay, that hits. Yeah, there's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, damage. Uh, 13, and then an extra d6, you said? Yeah, I don't think you need it, <laughs> but we'll see. So, uh, 13 without the d6, and then 
with the D6. This is not good. Sten coming in with the tactics, dude. <laughs> is it? What was dude, it? Uh, it's a five. The five? So 18 total damage? Yes. Wow. You know what? That's just enough. Describe, <laughs> describe how you kill uh, this, uh, this drone. Oh, so feeling this uh, jolt of... Uh, just rage and anger as uh, he watches Seahill go down and then hearing the battle cry of his companion, he just goes into a full on swing, like golf club swings it up into like, from his like pelvis up through his head and like just cleaves him in half. Yeah. Argyle, no longer amongst the undead, scattered its bones. <laughs> all over the Draugr planks. Ectelina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Um, can I see these guys? Mm, these if you step, if, if you step back, you could. Indeed. Let us, let's do that. I'm going to step back to here mm -hmm. and take a shot with the hand. No. No, 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 no. This guy right in front of Bjorn. We're gonna hit him with Song of Pain. As oh. more dissonant, ugly chords yeah. ring through. 19 to hit. Oh, that definitely hits. Or five psychic. How do you shatter this Draugr? Um who I like I like doing this. I just never anticipate doing it because I'm the bard. <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's just like a super screechy, loud opera sound as like the tiniest hole makes this screechy noise, and his bones just split apart from each other. Like if he were alive, it would have been an implosion. But now it's just bones flying everywhere. Yeah, you see its jaw unhinge for a moment, uh, and then. Poof. And it falls to the side, headless. Uh, Tulami, currently your turn. What are you doing? You got one Draugr left standing in front of you. Tulami's just taking a moment, just like looking between the body and Ectalia and the body. And then I sh he shakes his head and he stabs the the one twice, the okay. one in front of him with his daggers. Then swing to hit. Aw, oh, man. 14. That hits. Oh, thank God. Okay, and then the second one is another 14. Okay, yeah, both connect. Go and roll damage. Um, the damage was for the first one uh, with sneak attack because of the ally is 9. Without sneak attack was 5. Describe second. how you kill the last Draugr. Uh... So, inspired by Ectolina ex impl exploding, imploding, um, the other Draugr, I will take my two knives and put one in the side and then one in the heart, where I would consider the heart to be. I want to kill him. Okay. And the Draugr slumps down to its butt, uh, sitting down and no longer moving. I pat him on the head. Be like that sometimes. All right, we've exited combat. What are y'all doing? Uh, Seek Hild. Seek Hild. And Bjorn will rush to Seek Hild's side. Uh, I know I'm nothing about to... medicine. Can someone help me here? Let me help. Um, um, Stem sort of moves forward and tries to climb up as Bjorn's help gonna Kenzie's. Get Stem, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to climb up too. Yeah, I will. So, Does someone uh, want to give me a hand? I am very short. Uh, yes. Uh, and Bjorn's going to lead over and help uh, Ectolina up. All right. So oh. as you all gather up on the long ship to um, Toki, just makes his way up eventually. Um, you all uh, begin to tend your wounds, and that's where we're going to pause for the night. And thank you to everyone uh, who joined us. Um, 
despite our uh, technical issues. 